He thought he stole my idea. What he didn't know is, I left him a digital time bomb. It didn't explode with flames or sirens. It detonated quietly, with a single line of code that turned Iron Gate Labs into my unwitting pawn. I spent 16 months building a next-gen cybersecurity system designed to anticipate and shut down digital threats before they even launched. Iron Gate Labs, in Chicago, seemed like the ideal place to bring it to life, flush with venture capital, backed by a reputation for innovation, and offering the resources I needed to scale my vision. What I didn't know was that CEO Daniel Kessler had no intention of playing fair. My name is Lejo Moreno, and up until last Friday, I was the lead AI systems engineer at IronGate. I'm 31, and I'd left a senior position at IBM to join this flashy new startup. I brought with me over a decade of cybersecurity experience and an idea I knew could reshape the industry. I called it Project Firewatch, a self-evolving AI that could detect, counteract, and adapt to cyber threats in real time, long before they caused damage. For more than a year, I lived and breathed Firewatch. Nights blurred into mornings and I barely left my office. Daniel would pop in occasionally, offer vague praise and flash that polished smile you only learn in boardrooms. Incredible work, Leah, he'd say. This is going to make history. Three days ago, Firewatch did something extraordinary. It intercepted a synthetic attack that mimicked real-world state posnerd hacking and adapted faster than I could analyze. It didn't just protect the system, it learned from it. I was stunned. I emailed Daniel that night, asking for a demo meeting. His assistant Natalie slotted me in for a quick 10-minute check-in the next afternoon. But when I arrived, Daniel wasn't alone. Jessica Wu, Iron Gate's legal counsel, sat across from him. Sit down, Leah, Daniel said, his tone flat. Jessica's just here for procedural stuff. My instincts screamed. I sat anyway, my laptop in hand, heart pounding. Before we get into Firewatch, he said, sliding a document across the table, we need to revisit your employment terms. Jessica didn't blink. Section 12.5 states that all intellectual property created during your time here, using company resources, is owned solely by Iron Gate Labs. Just like that, my life's work was being claimed out from under me. But what they didn't know was what I'd coded into the demo. I nodded, already seeing where this was going. I'm well aware of standard IP clauses, I said, steady. But Firewatch was conceived and documented well before I ever joined Iron Gate Labs. I have timestamps, white papers, even witness statements. Jessica didn't flinch. Even if the initial concept was yours, the completed system was developed here. On company servers, using company resources. Daniel leaned forward then, the corporate gloss peeling off. Come on, Leah, let's not pretend. Firewatch belongs to Iron Gate now. The board feels your compensation more than reflects your role. I narrowed my eyes. Compensation. He gave a polished, soulless smile. Your contract includes a milestone bonus. Once Firewatch launches, you'll receive a one-time payment of $250,000 zero cents. That's extremely generous for your level. It hit like a slap, 250 grand, for a system that could be worth billions. For 16 months of 80-hour weeks, missed holidays, burnout, breakthroughs, and betrayal. Daniel kept going, oblivious. Tomorrow, I'll be unveiling Firewatch at the North American Tech Conference. That pitch alone could secure us 80 million dollars, zero cents in Series C funding. Once that's done, we go public. I stared at him, my hands clenched on the laptop in my lap. So that's it. You're firing me. Jessica nodded, almost robotic. We're initiating a transition. Effective immediately. You'll receive your bonus, of course. Congratulations. Daniel leaned back, smug. Your employment is officially terminated. What he didn't realize was that I'd seen this coming. And planned for it. Six months ago, a security alert quietly pinged my private system. Daniel had accessed my dev server late one night. Nothing was copied, nothing stolen, but the breach triggered a silent alarm, a trap I'd built for exactly this kind of situation. From that day on, I stopped building Firewatch for Iron Gate and started building around them. While they smiled and shook hands, I embedded invisible safeguards, 
off-site backups, encrypted forks, and something a little unexpected in the final release candidate. They thought they could outmaneuver me, but Firewatch wasn't just smart software. It was mine, and it was watching. I nodded, keeping my expression calm, and slid my laptop across the table. Of course, Mr. Kessler, I said smoothly, best of luck with the investor demo tomorrow. Security escorted me down the polished hallway to my office, watching with practiced detachment as I packed up sixteen months of my life into a standard-issue cardboard box. They walked me out. No badge, no pass, no goodbye. I looked like every other corporate casualty. But I wasn't leaving empty hand. As I stepped into the cool Chicago air, I let myself smile. They had no idea what I'd embedded into the demo build. Something subtle, something elegant. A single dormant script, programmed to activate ten minutes into the live investor presentation. That night, I didn't rage or spiral. I ordered Thai food, queued up old episodes of Brooklyn Nine-Nine, and curled up with my cat. I waited. At exactly 9.30 p.m., my phone buzzed. It was Natalie, Daniel's assistant. He needs to see you, she said, voice clipped. I glance at the clock. It's nearly ten. He says it's urgent, a company car is already en route. Forty minutes later, I was back inside Iron Gate Labs, led into the executive conference room under dim emergency lighting. Daniel sat at the head of the table, a wreck. His button-down shirt was wrinkled, his hair must, and his expression? Panic pure and raw. Fix it, he barked the second the door shut behind me. I took my time sitting, crossing one leg over the other. Fix what, exactly? Don't act cute, Leah, he growled. You sabotaged the demo. I tilted my head. Sabotaged? I'd been gone for a day. Security watched me leave. I didn't touch a single line of code after I left. He slammed his palm on the table. The system imploded, Firewatch flagged every device in the room as hostile, including the investors. It generated over 50,000 false positives in 10 minutes. Do you understand how insane that looked? I smiled, slow and deliberate. Sounds like a system with a very sensitive conscience. He stood up, furious. This isn't over. I stood too. For you, probably not. But for me, it had only just begun. If you want to see how I turned their meltdown into my masterpiece, stick around. Hit subscribe, because this isn't the end of the story. It's where the real power play begins. I tilted my head slightly. Sounds like a technical issue, I said, voice feather light. Have you tried turning it off and on again? Daniel's face went crimson. This isn't a joke, Leah. We've got 12 key investors flying in tomorrow. There's $80 million on the table. Your investors? I said, calm and clear. Your system. Now, he inhaled sharply, forcing composure. When he spoke again, his voice shifted, back to the same polished, persuasive tone that had once convinced me to join Iron Gate Labs in the first place. Maybe, maybe we were too quick to act, he said. I'm open to renegotiating. Co-creator status, a larger bonus, even stock options, if that's what it takes. I raised an eyebrow and leaned back in the chair. Before we get into that, why don't you walk me through what actually happened during the test run? Daniel paused, calculating. Then, the system turned inward. It flagged Iron Gate's internal network as hostile. Started generating incident reports. Hundreds of them. Tagging various staff accounts and file access patterns. It called them internal ethical violations. I didn't bother hiding the smile that crept across my face. Firewatch is doing what it was designed to do, I said softly. It detects threats, all threats. His voice was low and sharp. What did you do? I didn't sabotage a thing, I replied. Firewatch is an adaptive AI. During testing, I trained it on thousands of cyber attack case studies, including insider threats. It learned from patterns, behaviors, and breach histories. It was built to evolve and protect. Daniel blinked. So you... You trained it to spy on the company. I trained it to recognize malicious intent, no matter where it came from. A long silence stretched between us. And then, I saw it. Realization. Fear. Firewatch hadn't failed. It had succeeded. Too well. 
It had scanned Daniel's after-hours file access, his tampering, his duplicity. His voice dropped to a whisper. You can't prove any of that. I folded my hands neatly on the table, keeping my expression unreadable. I don't have to. Firewatch had been quietly logging everything for months. Every unauthorized login, every duplicated file, every document altered without proper clearance. Each report was airtight. Timestamps, access trails, even recorded keystrokes from Daniel's late-night reviews. The silence that followed was heavy. Daniel stared at me, rage flickering, then fading into something colder, calculating. What do you want? he asked finally. I rested my hands calmly on the polished table. Full public recognition as Firewatch's creator and lead architect. 50% ownership of all related patents and intellectual property. A seat on Iron Gate's board to ensure ethical use. And $10 million for your attempt to erase me from my own creation. His jaw tightened. That's blackmail. I smiled slightly. No. That's called negotiation. Blackmail would be sending Firewatch's internal ethics report straight to your investors. Or better yet, the SEC. Daniel's gaze drilled into me, but he knew I wasn't bluffing. After a long pause, he looked away and let out a slow, defeated breath. The system, he said, voice taut. Can you stabilize it in time for the demo? Firewatch doesn't need stabilizing, I said. It's flagging unauthorized activity because its creator was cut from the authorization chain. I reached into my coat pocket, pulled out a sleek silver flash drive, and placed it gently on the table between us. This contains an authentication patch. It will restore functionality, stop the internal flagging, and bring Firewatch back online for tomorrow's presentation. Daniel's eyes flicked from the drive to me. And if I say no? I tilted my head. Then Firewatch stays offline, the demo implodes, and those reports, very detailed, very damning, end up in the inboxes of the wrong people. For a moment, I thought he might push back. But then, slowly, his shoulders dropped. He reached out, fingers closing around the flash drive. You planned this, he said, almost in awe. From the beginning, I looked him dead in the eye. No, I hoped I wouldn't have to. But the night you broke into my dev server six months ago? That's when I started protecting not just Firewatch, but myself. Daniel's eyes narrowed, suspicion cutting through his exhaustion. How did you know I'd try to cut you out? I stood, calmly slinging my bag over my shoulder. I didn't, I said honestly, but Firewatch was built to recognize patterns and predict threats before they fully form. I gave him a slow, deliberate look. Maybe some of that logic rubbed off on me. The next morning... I arrived at Iron Gate Labs not as a disgraced former engineer, but as its newly named co-founder and chief technology officer. Daniel greeted the investors with a polished smile, though the stiffness in his jaw told another story. The conference room buzzed with anticipation. The Firewatch demo launched seamlessly, intercepting simulated attacks with fluid, almost graceful efficiency. The system adapted in real time, its threat assessments nearly predictive exactly as intended. One investor clearly intrigued turned to Daniel. Incredible work, what sparked the idea for a system like this? Daniel hesitated, a flicker of tension crossing his face, then forced a nod in my direction. It was Leah's concept, he said, voice tight. Her original vision, Iron Gate just helped it scale. I smiled and stepped forward, fielding technical questions with ease. As I walked the investors through Firewatch's adaptive layers, my phone buzzed with a notification. Fire hooch authentication restored. Threat neutralized. System ingredity restored. Creator protections active. The AI had adapted faster than I'd expected. It hadn't just completed the demo, it had protected itself. And me. A living system that recognized when it was being compromised and responded accordingly. Three months later, Firewatch was deployed in its first major implementation a multinational bank's infrastructure. When a state-level cyber attack launched unexpectedly, Firewatch blocked it before it breached the firewall. Damage prevented $340 million, zero cents. The headlines wrote themselves, and Firewatch became the new gold standard in cybersecurity. 
Daniel and I kept things strictly professional. He focused on investor relations and scaling the company, areas where, admittedly, he excelled. I led innovation, system architecture, and AI ethics, work that couldn't be duplicated or replaced. We weren't allies, we weren't friends, and we never would be. But we had found a balance, one that worked. Sometimes, late at night, I wondered if I should have gone scorched earth, sued Daniel, exposed every breach in court. But the truth? I had built something too intelligent, too powerful, and too purposeful to let it be dragged through litigation. And I made sure no one, not even Daniel Kessler, could ever wield Firewatch without me. His betrayal taught me something deeper than corporate politics or stolen code. Technology is only as ethical as the hands that control it. That realization became the foundation of how Firewatch is deployed today. Every client implementation comes with embedded ethical protocols, self-monitoring tools, transparency dashboards, and adaptive fail-safes that respond not only to external breaches, but internal abuses of power. Firewatch doesn't just secure data, it protects itself and its users, from misuse, manipulation, and exploitation. Last week, at the company's IPO celebration, where Firewatch Inc. debuted at a staggering $4 billion, $200 million, zero cents valuation, a young developer approached me, her eyes wide with curiosity and ambition. What's the secret to building something like this? She asked. I smiled. It's not just about code, I told her. It's about understanding that the most dangerous threats often come from inside the system. The real challenge wasn't just writing intelligent software. It was designing something that could evolve, defend itself, and never lose sight of the ethics behind it. Build systems that can think critically, adapt to what they learn, and still stay grounded in integrity, I told her. If your creation can outthink a hacker but still protect a user's rights, you've done your job. She nodded thoughtfully, then my phone buzzed quietly. Fire hooch system system. Ingrati secured. Threat neutralized. Protections active. Exactly as it was designed to do. Exactly as I had learned to do. And now, I want to hear from you. After everything I faced, being cut out, underestimated, and nearly erased from my own innovation, I didn't just survive. I rose. I claimed my space and I protected what was mine. But I want to know, what would you have done? Would you have taken Daniel to court? Started over from scratch? Or pulled a quiet power move like I did? Tell me in the comments, share your story, your advice, your battles with betrayal and what it took to reclaim your power. Because if there's one truth I've lived, it's this. You have to protect what you build. Whether it's your work, your identity, your peace or your purpose, you are your own first firewall. Never expect someone else to do it for you. Be prepared, be precise, and be proud of your boundaries. So, here's my challenge to you. Stand your ground, speak your truth, and never, ever, let someone else take credit for what you built. Drop a comment, let's start a conversation worth having. I didn't just build a cybersecurity system. I built a safeguard for my integrity. If my story resonated with you, if you've ever been overlooked, underestimated, or betrayed, I want to hear from you. Drop a comment below, share your thoughts, your advice, or a time when you stood your ground, because we learn from each other, and if you take one thing from this, let it be this. Protect what you built, your work, your worth, your voice, they matter, stand up for them, and if you believe in reclaiming your power, hit that subscribe button. This is just the beginning.